Nvidia's doing big numbers. Gaming's not dead yet. Dbrand's going on a lawsuit and Intel beat AMD in the GPU sector. Wow. Let's get into hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Friday, November 24th, 2023, also known as Black Friday deal buckling, cause Reese is gonna have an extra spicy UFD deals for you. And that's exactly what Nvidia has been having with their latest earnings report. They are still continuing to just earn a severe amount of money, up 34% from the previous quarter, earning a ton of cash, 18 billion, dollars total. Need I remind you that before this year, they had not crossed the $10 billion mark, and now they are quickly approaching 20, with most of that going to AI, data center, all of that stuff. Their numbers coming in at $14.5 billion for that, but not to be ignored. They are actually earning a significant amount more in terms of gaming. So you can see that it's actually about $370 million more in Q3 versus Q2, and it's almost double what it was this time a year ago where they only earned $1.5 billion. Now they're at $2.85 billion. So the gaming sector does appear to be rebounding for them. Every single quarter since this time last year has been an increase for them on the gaming sector, just as they are also increasing on the data center sector. Now this could start to transition where the gaming side starts bleeding into some of the AI side, especially when things are happening over in China where the high-end graphics cards are getting banned. They might actually have to switch over to gaming GPUs, but at least in the rest of the world where Nvidia's highest-end cards are not being bad, they're gonna continue to sell the high-end A100s and the like to all of the AI partners that they have in the gaming sector can, can potentially stay where it is, hopefully. But they, they're still earning a lot of money, so those extra few hundred bucks that they've been charging for that 4080, that 4070 Ti, it's definitely hitting them right in the pocketbook. Good job, everybody who said Nvidia's price gouging them and then still bought their cards. It happens every time. Nvidia just continues to earn money despite whatever they do to us as consumers. But we're here for Black Friday and talking about how you can save money as consumers. And I'm excited to talk about today's video sponsor, V1 Tech. V1 Tech's actually an amazing company for you to upgrade and kit out your gaming setup. From wall art to GPU backplates, they have a ton. But what they have special for this Black Friday is their case printing service. So for only $99, which is their cheapest price ever, on this, they can do a six-sided print on the PC011 Evo from Lee and Lee, giving you some of the amazing designs that they have on their website. A lot of these, the color scheme fits very well with Hot News. I like the skyline specifically, that cyberpunk theme that it's got going on. Six-sided case printing for only $99.99 above the cost of the case. Not only do these look amazing so that you can have an incredibly unique system with all of the printing, but they also actually work directly with the artist and all of the printing is done here in the United States. You can check out V1 Tech and their PC 011 Evo case printing, which is at its lowest price ever of only $99 at the link in the video description. Big thanks to V1 Tech for sponsoring us today for Black Friday. And one of the GPUs that you could potentially stick in one of those 011 Evos is the 4090 Evangelion Edition. At least you could, and you could probably also fit another GPU in there, which is exactly what Asus China did. They put a GPU on a GPU, and you're wondering how did that happen? Well, it's thanks to the fact that they have the 4060 Ti with the M.2 slot. Now they were thinking that this is for SSDs, but they were like, hey, you can do an M.2 adapter to a GPU and have that set up. And I wonder where somebody got the idea to do that. It wasn't for me. I could have never ever done that. They also did not do like their I stole the idea from so many other people, but it's clear that it does work. Now the PCI Express slot on the GPU is only four lanes because it's the SSD slot. So it's not getting maximum 4090 performance, but it does work theoretically. Additionally, one of the interesting things that they showed off in this video was that even though the 4060 Ti is a PCI Express 4.0 graphics card, the SSD is a 5.0 slot and you can get 5.0 speeds out of it if you have a 5.0 SSD. So theoretically, when NVIDIA drops their next generation of GPUs with PCI Express 5.0, it would run faster on this 4060 Ti than the 4090 does right now because it would have more PCI Express lanes. You get more throughput. It's a really intriguing use case. I'm baffled at this. 4090 eGPU, it works on a 4060 Ti. Amazing stuff to see. But what's bad to see is that uh, Debrin is having to embark on a lawsuit, not against Sony, but against a rival case manufacturer known as Casetify, who has alleged that they are worth over 
over a billion dollars. And part of this is revealed in a Jerry Rig Everything video, which we have linked in the video description. But turns out that on the teardown skins that Jerry Rig Everything makes in partnership with D Brand, they leave little Easter eggs because Zach says things like glass is glass and glass breaks. And those things were hidden on the teardown skins, which Case Defy then actually sold as their inside out skins. And so D Brand has filed for copyright infringement with 117 different images cited in the lawsuit, with it appearing on essentially all of them. They took away some of the Easter eggs, but left a lot of them in, especially the ones that were harder to notice, but couldn't be very easily identified. But this will likely play out in the court of law. We'll keep you updated as all of that happens. But I can tell you, I'm not going to levy a lawsuit against Reese, not at least right now. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, it's Black Friday. Who would have thought? We're going to be having a mega deals episode today. So let's get straight into it. Starting with the EVGA X20 wireless gaming mouse for only $16.19 with the included promo code, making it $53.80 off. Then we have this Ryzen 9 5900X desktop CPU, which one of the big boy AM4 CPUs going for only $289 with the included promo code, making it $260 off. But then if you want to cool that, we have the NZXT Kraken X73 360 millimeter AIO CPU liquid cooler going for only $129.99 with the included promo code, making it $55 off. Next up, we have an office favorite with the HyperX Cloud 2 7.1 surround sound gaming headset for only $49.99, making it half price off. And another cool pickup is this Respawn 110 ergonomic gaming chair for only $90.99, making it $159 off. Then if you've been wanting to get into the handheld game, we have the Asus ROG Ally gaming handheld, specifically the Ryzen Z1 variant, not the Z1 Extreme, with 512 gigs of storage for only $449.99, making it $150 off. But then switching up, we have the Logitech Pro X Super Light wireless gaming mouse for only $99.99, making it $60 off for my mouse of choice. But then if you're looking for some Apple deals, we have the latest gen 10.9 inch iPad, specifically the 64 gig variant in any color, going for only $349, which makes it $100 off. But then if you're looking to complete your holiday gifting buys with that, you can also pick up the AirPods Pro second gen for only $189.99, making it $60 off. Another great pickup is the Sony PlayStation 5 DualSense wireless controllers, which are available for only $49.99 in any color. I chose the galactic purple because that's the coolest one. But then another Sony Sony favorite is these XB-N910 wireless noise cancelling headphones. The XB stands for extra bass. They're really cool. And they're going for only $119.99, making it $130 off. And then last but not least, we have the Acer Nitro 27-inch 1440p 180Hz IPS gaming monitor for only $169.99, making it $100 off. And the Black Friday deals don't end there because we're going to be doing a live stream later on on Twitch and YouTube where we compile community submitted deals in a big mega doc full of certified bangers. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the good Black Friday deals, be sure to check out the stream. And if you find a deal that you feel everyone should have a look at, then come submit it and we can have some fun. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brave for the rest of the hot news. Also come, come stream, it's fun, it's good stuff. Bye. Thank you, Reese. But don't worry, we're going to replace you with an AI soon enough. Let's talk about OpenAI and that debacle that went on last week with the CEO Sam Altman getting ousted and then allegedly coming back and then getting bought out by Microsoft. And then actually now, as of Friday, he was reinstated as the OpenAI CEO. So this whole uproar and change resulted in nothing happening except for the lack of trust in the board of directors over at OpenAI. But now there are rumors that are coming from more substantiated sources like Reuters, which are indicating we now have an idea as to why the board of directors did this. So allegedly this is because the OpenAI board found out that one of their AIs that they've been working on known as QSTAR achieved a level of breakthrough that could threaten humanity's ability to actually perform economically viable tasks and that this will allow AI to do it completely. And allegedly, the QSTAR breakthrough allowed it to perform rudimentary math tasks that it didn't otherwise learn in a way that's different than the large language model that's being used on ChatGPT. So essentially, it learned to do grade school math, but because it actually learned how to do math. From what I've been reading, this kind of allows it to go into actual artificial general intelligence, which is the next breakthrough, not just large language models being able to parse together words that are supposed to go together, but actually truly understanding, developing, and learning on its own. And that is allegedly what the board of directors found out happened at QSTAR. Sam Altman knew about it and did not disclose it to the board who believes that they had 
had a need to do that. Now, there are a ton of questions in this, and a lot of this does feel like fear-mongering to some extent. This is just my personal opinion being brought in on this, especially when large language models and like face swap stuff has happened. A lot of the use cases and potential benefits get overblown and overhyped because it's brand new, it's fancy, and we're not quite sure what to make of it. But as we settle into the use cases, we find that it's not as robust as the fortune tellers and soothsayers are making it seem like it's actually going to be. And this does breathe a little bit like that. Maybe QSTAR did make an advancement in terms of mathematical AI advancements, but it's not gonna be the undoing of civilization. And that's why they got rid of Sam Altman and OpenAI was expecting that they needed to have another CEO, like the former CEO of Twitch. He's the guy who's gonna be able to handle all of this to usher us into a more effectively stewarded future of AI being properly managed while every other AI company in the entire face of the planet is just blasting NVIDIA GPUs at the same problem. It seemed very intriguing and I don't know how much to make of it, especially because the Reuters article about this uh, has a lot of speculative and hearsay language, just a lot of things being uncorroborated. So we'll keep an eye on this as this is all moving forward because obviously the uh, un doing of all economically viable tasks via artificial general intelligence. Sounds like it's bad for, you know, people, but maybe we can leverage it into tools or maybe this is the end of everything as we know it, but it's not the end of AMD because we know more about their GPUs. Good, good lighthearted segue there. Our DNA 4 popping up in some Linux details, especially in LLVM, where we now have some details of the RDNA 4 GPUs based on Navi 44 and Navi 48. We've got the numbers now. That's really the, the basis of the leak and AMD is making new graphics cards. Who would have thought? But it doesn't matter because the current ones that they have on the market are getting beat by Intel. My goodness, the next generation of Intel mobile chips in Meteor Lake, whew, they are putting up some hot numbers, beating out the essentially holy grail GPU right now, the 780M when it comes to mobile and handheld. That integrated GPU has been featured in everything from the ROG Ally, Lenovo Legion Go. It's all over the place. But now an Asus laptop with the Core Ultra 7 155H and an ARC integrated GPU has put up bigger numbers than the 780M. The last time we saw this GPU pop up, it was slightly lower in performance than the 780M, but it appears that whatever is happening in this specific Asus ZenBook actually allows it to beat out the 780M, the fastest 780M, not the slowest. This isn't just like, oh, we're pulling a low number. This is the highest wattage 780M that's on the market. The 155H integrated GPU beats that and gets within spin distance of the dedicated ARC A380 GPU on desktop. It is 91% of Intel's desktop GPU. Now, the reason this is exciting is not that this is likely going to perform better in games. We know that Intel has a long way to go in software if they're going to beat AMD when it comes to their GPU performing as good in real world scenarios. It just shows that Intel is steadily and heavily making advancements to being a viable competitor in the gaming space. If they start getting included in some gaming handhelds like we've already seen with these chips. That's going to be good for them to continue to move forward. If they are put in more devices, they have more data points that they can use for driver updates and they can actually make things better and we can get more competition in the market. Unless, of course, AI starts playing all of our games for us or takes away all of our jobs so that we can't afford the graphics cards to even play the games in the first place. And how does the economy function then? I don't know. And how does hot news function? Doesn't matter. Let's Let's talk about what you guys had to say on Friday's episode of Hot News. We had Darth saying, I'm not under the impression that the 4070 is as despised as some of the other 4000 cards, like the 4060 Ti, 4070 Ti, 4080. I've been hearing people say the 4070 and 7800 XT are pretty good options, relatively speaking, for the newer generation of GPUs. And then my YouTube comment channel says, I thought the 4070 was one of the better received cards this generation. Certainly has one of the least offensive price to performance. Are you kidding me. I, man. Okay. I have been in the trenches with the 4070. I've been defending it since day one. And when people are in the comments saying it's not as badly contested as some of the other ones, I did not receive that when I made a video about the 4070. In fact, I would argue that the best GPU that Nvidia has this generation in terms of press to performance is the 4070 Ti. I think that is a much better card than the 4070. Also the 4070, not only when it launched, did it get punched in the face by the 6950 XT for the same price, but then also 
Also, additionally, yeah, you could quote the 7800 XT, but that thing's $100 cheaper. It's not in the same situation. And then also it coincided with the 12 gigabytes of VRAM debacle where people were like, why would you want a GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM? It was the one that got insulted the most. Maybe the general sentiments out there, maybe I'm a little bit defensive because I released a video defending the 4070 and maybe that just invited all of the 4070 haters and I didn't quite see as much viscerality when I talked about the 4070 Ti, but I agree that the 4070 is a good card, but I also have seen most people that at least the vocal ones on the internet, in sales, it probably isn't, but you know, when, when people are uh, grouching at me on the internet, the 4070 has been, it's Nvidia's middle finger to everybody, allegedly. Hot Soggy Cheeto says, I just tuned in to hear Kyle introduce himself while talking over Brett. Keep it going, hilarious. I, <sighs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. We, we're, I think we're hitting our groove now. I like having Kyler around. He's obviously not here because I'm filming this on Thanksgiving, so he's he's not here for that. But it's it's good stuff. He'll be back on Tuesday's episode. Mind Jewel saying the 4070 is actually good for a lot of small form factor builds. I agree. That's I the power draw, the small size makes it very very nice. Then you got Yudi saying Z1 Extreme PS Vita 2, same game library as the PS5, which I already responded to in comment because this was the discussion Kyler and I were having on Friday, a Vita 2 wouldn't work because you couldn't run PS5 games at the same fidelity because the Z1 Extreme does not work the same way that the, the PS5 SoC does. The power draw, you couldn't do it in a handheld. It would be impossible. So either you would have to seriously downscale resolution and performance in order to make that happen, or you would have to have a dedicated library of games. That's just how it would work. But even if they had a Z1 Extreme Sony handheld. It would have to cost more than the PS5. The, the ROG Ally cost more than the PS5. Legion Go cost more than the PS5. Every 7840HS mobile handheld that I've seen costs more than the, the, the PS5. The PS5 would be the cheap part of that, and then you would have a handheld that costs even more, and we'd have a worse conversation of like, oh, you're buying that $700 handheld that can't even play it as good as the PS5? I think Sony struck the right balance of like, hey, this works with PS5 games. It's not perfect, but it does work. What more do you want? You can't you can't have a mobile SoC that runs PS5 games at the moment. It's just not possible. And it's not possible for me to keep this episode of Hot News going any longer. We'll be back on Monday for more of your hottest tech news. Cyber Monday, allegedly.